Hello and welcome to today's Ninja Trader ecosystem event, the Mad Ichimoku Squeeze with Chris Lassen of Lizard Indicators. My name is Thomas and I'm a platform representative here at Ninja Trader. Now, before we start the webinar, I have a few housekeeping notes. Now, this webinar is presented by Ninja Trader LLC, which is the technology company responsible for developing and supporting the Ninja Trader's trading software. Brokerage related questions should be directed to the Ninja Trader brokerage team using the phone number or email on the screen. And if you are new to Ninja Trader, please make sure you sign up for your free Ninja Trader demo with real market data. Our platform is always available for advanced charting, strategy back testing, and trade simulation. You can get your free demo account by clicking the link on the screen. And before I turn over the mic to Chris, it's important to understand that futures, foreign currency, and options trading can contain substantial risk, it is not suitable for every investor. It is possible to lose all or more than your initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And also please remember that these training sessions are not a solicitation or recommendation, but simply educational in nature. Now, thank you again for joining us today. And without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome to the Ninja webinar room, Chris. Hello from uh, Berlin, Germany, everyone. It's a lot of new people here today, but uh, also some of you who are familiar with uh, who we are. So shout out to Darren, David, Heinz, Sally Roberts, and Michael, a couple of the names that I saw here on the participants list. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with us, uh, we're a team of uh, two at uh, Listed Indicators. That's me to the left here, Chris uh, Lassen, and our market lizard, as always, to the right, Harry, also known as Fat Tails, who's programmed some of the most downloaded indicators for the Ninja Trader platform. Uh, we've uh, both been a part of the Nina Trader ecosystem for quite some time now. I think combined uh, 20 plus years. And uh, what we offer with the Lizard Indicators is a uh, couple of things. First, we have the uh, free Indicators Spotlight newsletter, uh, where we feature some of the tools that are available in the library, the Nina Trader 8 uh, library that we have here. Uh, the spotlight is usually a blog post uh, with a explanation of a trading setup um, or a general concept from technical analysis. There's a video there as well, along with a free download for the uh, indicator that we're talking about so that you can review on your end. As uh, for the library, it uh, has pretty much become the go-to resource for the Trader community by now collection of uh, open source tools, about uh, 150 indicators in there, all available for a one-time flat fee of uh, 195 bucks. So the main purpose uh, is uh, just to give traders a wide range of tools to test and review what is a good fit. Uh, and whereas most vendors charge a minimum of 195 per indicator, to find out whether any particular method is right for you, we offer unlimited access to the entire library for the same price. So as a member, you have access to all 150 tools for a one-time non-recurring payment of 195. So finally, we have uh, the premium suite uh, where you'll find our professional tools. And uh, today, We'll look at uh, some of them applied to a momentum and breakout scenario, uh, specifically the mad Ichimoku squeeze. So we'll start off with the uh, Ichimoku indicator here that was developed in Japan by Guichi Osada back in the late 60s. It's been a while since we talked about uh, the Ichimoku, so we'll start off with a quick uh, recap on how that is uh, put together. And then we'll look at uh, how to filter these setups using a narrow range analysis in a higher time frame. A similar concept to the squeeze, if anyone is familiar with that setup, 
basically you're looking to identify situations when the market is building up momentum for its next move higher or lower. Uh, but instead of using the Bollinger Bands with standard deviations to find the breakouts, we'll uh, show how to apply a rolling VWAP with a mean absolute deviation. Uh, so that calculation, the mean absolute deviation or MAD, <laughs> creates uh, more stable and reliable uh, deviation bands or value area from where the breakout should originate. So we'll get back to all of that in a little bit. Uh, but first, let's uh, have a quick uh, recap of the Ichimoku indicator. Surely a bit uh, much at first glance, if uh, this is the first time uh, you hear and see of it. So the easiest way to look at this is as a trend and momentum indicator in five timeframes. Um, also, the Ichimoku has some similarities to other well-known trend and momentum indicators, um, the Donchian channel and the MACD specifically. So I'll briefly point those out as we go through the five timeframes here, one by one. So we have the Tenkan and Kiju Sen and the Senku spans A and B that make up the characteristic Ichimoku cloud. And finally have the Chiku span back here. Uh, so we'll start with the Tenkan Sen, which uh, follows price the closest. So uh, you have a nine period high, adding a nine period low, dividing that by two. And that is actually the same as the Donchian channel midline if you apply it to a nine bar uh, period. And uh, the red plot here is the Kijun Sen applies the same formula on a 26 period. So 26 period high, low, and divided by two. Again, corresponding to the Dantian channel midline, uh, if you apply it to the same 26 bar look back. So the uh, relationship uh, between the Tenkan and Kijun Sen is similar to a, a nine and a 26 period moving average. So a fast versus a slow, and you're looking for these crosses here. And interestingly, the nine and the 26 periods are also the same that are used to calculate the MACD. So a classic uh, signal is to wait for the uh, Tenkan Sen to cross the Kijun Sen. And that is uh, efficiently enough, but uh, uh, the signal will not occur very often in strong trends. So uh, additional signals can be found when the price is crossing the Kijun or the Tenkan Sen lines. But of course, you want to qualify those types of setups with um, price action or thrust bars. So a higher than average range for the signal bar and perhaps also close above the bar high uh, to confirm. And we'll circle back to uh, these uh, thrust bar uh, definitions uh, shortly. Just go through the different plots here. First, um, this is the most characteristic uh, plot, uh, the Ichimoku cloud or the Kumo, which is uh, projecting forwards 26 bars by way of two lines, uh, the Senko A and B spans. So the Senko span A is uh, simply the Tenkan Sen plus the Kijun Sen. So if you remember, you have nine plus uh, 26 here. So 35 period high plus 35 period low, again, divided by two. And then the Senko span B is a 52 uh, bar period. And um, as for an uptrend, uh, you will find that when the Senko span A is crossing the B line, uh, plotting a green cloud here. And a downtrend is when the Senko span A drops below the B line, plotting a red cloud. And when prices uh, trade within the cloud, uh, then it's considered a sideways or consolidating market. 
So finally, we have uh, the Chico span line. Uh, this is uh, simply the close displaced back 26 bars. So it's a momentum filter. And the rule is pretty simple. Uh, the Chico span has to be on your side. Uh, so if you take a long position, the Chico span has to be above where price was 26 bars ago. So if you look at this, uh, you see it's mirroring the price action here. And then you look backwards, where was the price 26 bars ago, all the way down here. So this is a go ahead for the uh, Chico span um, and vice versa for shorts. Of course, the Chico then should be below price. All right, so uh, what to do with uh, all of this? Uh, well, uh, the indicator allows you to define a composite trend uh, to filter signals. So by default, uh, we've set it to look for where the price is relative to the Kijun line. And uh, we also want the Tenkan Sen to be on the right side of the Kijun Sen. So there has to be a Tenkan Kiju cross uh, that has to have occurred. And you want the price to be in agreement with the cloud, meaning it has to be have broken above for long signals to occur and below for short positions to be possible. So when these filters are in agreement and point in one direction, you will have a bullish trend as we see here in the paint bars and a conversely red for the short scenario. And if uh, they're contradicting one another, uh, then we see these uh, gray uh, paint bars indicating sideways action or indecision. Personally, I uh, prefer to just have a clean chart uh, using the paint bars to display the composite trend. I think it improves uh, overall visibility, giving some uh, space for other tools perhaps, and lets me focus on the trade signals, uh, which are set to detect these uh, thrust bars that I mentioned. So I have a, have a look at uh, how those are defined. Uh, first, you want to have a significant range. So that is at least uh, half the size of the average range. And uh, for a bullish scenario, we also want to see a, a close that is above the open, uh, a close which is above the mid range or in the upper half of the range of, uh, of the bar and you want to close above the high for the last bar or the prior bar. If uh, these requirements are not met, uh, the signal will be deferred. Uh, so we have two types of signals here, as you may see, double arrows and single, single arrows. So you have a bullish key signal uh, that will follow after a bearish signal and vice versa for shorts. So the key signals are double triangles, whereas the other are single, single triangles uh, are consecutive signals. So the key signal will be a marker for the beginning of a new trend and the others here as a continuation. Okay, so uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, how we can identify market uh, contraction or low volatility scenarios um, that may precede a, a good uh, breakout opportunity. Uh, what we see here is the conventional squeeze channel indicator, uh, which is also available from the library. And uh, that was originally presented by John Bollinger in his book uh, on a Bollinger bands. Uh, the Bollinger bands display a standard deviation uh, above and below a uh, moving average. So during periods of high volatility, we'll have widening uh, bands and during less volatile uh, scenarios, uh, you will have um, a narrow channel. So a Bollinger squeeze will uh, show uh, low volatility scenarios, 
when the standard deviation of the Bollinger bands reach a minimum for a 120 bar look back period. And coming up here, we'll uh, have a look at why the standard deviation might not be the best approach for determining volatility. Uh, but apart from that, it is uh, also a good idea to review market action in different perspectives. And as you see here, both the consolidation and the breakouts uh, show up in the same time frame, which uh, may result in a lot of noise signals. So instead, we'll have a look at how to identify narrow ranges in uh, higher time frames and um, to filter the Ichimoku momentum and breakout setups. Of course, there is a constant change in the markets uh, from a period of uh, movement followed by a time of uh, contraction and then expansion again. So I'll put up this uh, image of my son's uh, accordion to illustrate uh, the point. It's just kind of the way the music plays in the markets. And uh, the narrow range concept uh, is described in uh, Toby Crable's book, uh, Day Trading with the short-term price patterns and the opening range breakouts. And uh, his research indicate that sideways action precede trending days. And that in turn can be used to identify situations where the market is building up momentum for the next uh, major move, higher or lower. So there's a few ways of uh, finding these narrow ranges in higher time frames. The inside bar is uh, pretty well known, I think, and uh, defined as having a range which is uh, completely encompassed by the previous bar. So we see here the prior high and lows are outside uh, the current bar high and low levels. And in extension, you can combine this uh, condition with a look back period, identifying, for example, the narrow four bar pattern. So in that case, uh, we'll have an inside bar with a range which is narrower than the previous three bars um, compared individually. So we see an inside bar here, but we also see that the range is smaller than the prior three bars. So again, the indicator library has a tool uh, to enable you to identify those types of scenarios, uh, namely the range analysis indicator. And although Crable originally developed the concept for daily charts, uh, you can also uh, use it for intraday. And this is what it looks like in a 30 minute chart of the ES contract. The yellow bars indicate uh, inside bar, narrow pattern, so as we see uh, the uh, inside bar with the prior ranges here, um, you see the inside bar barely here, and you'll see that the range here is smaller than the prior three bars. And later on here, we see a uh, double inside bar, uh, which uh, is a fairly rare pattern uh, appears when there's an even tighter range following an inside bar and hour pattern. So you see that this bar here is inside the uh, uh, narrow four bar pattern and um, smaller than the, the, the prior three bars, of course. And uh, you can also see a slight difference here in the coloring between the up and down closes. So that information is also available to you, the yellow here is down close and the gold will be a up close. So Crable uh, identified additional contraction patterns. Uh, for example, the narrow range seven or the NR7 uh, pattern uh, displayed on the charts here. Uh, this uh, is identified by a range which is narrower than any of the previous six bars. So that does not have to be an inside bar. You see here this one, it's a bit small perhaps to see it, but uh, it's a narrower range than the prior six bars, uh, but it's not an inside bar. And so that is not a requirement, uh, but it will be uh, displayed as such 
uh, inside bar if it's uh, concluding uh, the narrow range seven bar. So we see inside bar seven here, um, there's a narrow range than the prior six bars, but it's also an inside bar. So uh, that information is available as well. So Craver would uh, use the daily charts, as I mentioned, to uh, find cons consolidation. Then uh, depending on the primary bar series, uh, you could also use a four hour chart, which is uh, what we have here of the NQ or a 30 or a 60 minute charts, uh, what we looked at pre previously here on the previous slide. So again, the idea is uh, similar to the squeeze, uh, just identifying situations where there's a lull before the storm or scenarios where the market is waiting for a catalyst to bring about uh, the next move uh, higher or lower. So Krebel's assumption was to uh, see that there is a um, new trend following a higher time frame range, and then to align uh, the uh, short-term momentum uh, with the, the new trend. Uh, but uh, for a momentum or a uh, breakout, uh, you, you should still define a value area uh, from where that uh, uh, should depart. Uh, which brings me to my favorite uh, indicator, the rolling VWAP. Uh, why is that my favorite? Well, because the volume weighted average price tells me a lot about the current trend value and overbought, oversold to identify viable trading setups. So you can use it uh, in the short term. I have a, a one day rolling leave up here or a, a five day rolling leave up here, a continuous rolling leave up. Um, or for the medium or short or long term, you have the uh, monthly and the yearly VWAP calculation as opposed to the standard anchored VWAPs. Uh, the calculation here starts at the session open. So the first day of the week, month, uh, or the year. Uh, most of you will be familiar with these uh, as available through uh, the library again, or the uh, linear trader order flow suite plots uh, the volume weighted arithmetical mean of all transactions that take place during each session. So adding the prices for every transaction, dividing by the total number of contracts traded during that time. Um, but there is a, a limitation with these anchored VWAPs. Um, and that is that you have to wait some time in order to make useful readings uh, with these standard deviation bands here. So this is a uh, weekly VWAP on a 60 minute NQ chart anchored at the first day of the week. Uh, but you can at the earliest start using it midway through the Tuesday session uh, because on Mondays here, uh, the VWAP will display the same information as the current day VWAP uh, because they both use the same anchor point, obviously. And if you're not familiar with the VWAP, the main purpose here is to establish an area where the majority of uh, the week's transactions are likely to take place. So that's the value area. Um, statistically, about two thirds of uh, all trades will occur within this uh, area, one standard deviation from the VWAP. And that's important because uh, institutional traders uh, use that area to find opportunities where they will find a good supply and demand to keep execution costs in check. So it's a sort of a place where they try to hide the large orders. Um, but as you see here, if we're taking signals from inside value area, we would have missed this key uh, Ichimoku signal here. It's outside the value. Uh, whereas if we were using a five day rolling VWAP, uh, that would allow us to take the signal here. So the rolling VWAP takes data from the last week's session, moving it forwards. And as you see, we have a more stable value area, enabling us to 
consider setups at the beginning of the weekly session. So the idea then is to take uh, directional trades from value towards uh, the other standard, avi standard deviation bands. And uh, once uh, we reach that area, um, institutional participants are likely to take a step back and momentum usually stalls as we see here. So back to, back to the value area and boom, off, off we go again. So this is a good place to consider exits, uh, the second uh, standard deviation band. Uh, but uh, one observation, observation that we've uh, made is that uh, the standard deviation calculation might not be the best option for calculating the bands here on the, on the rolling VVAP. Uh, this is uh, particularly true uh, with respect to the outer devi standard deviation bands that are used for exit timing. Uh, briefly, the um, standard deviation calculation does not deal very well with the outliers or what we call fat tails or black swans. Um, the assumption behind the standard deviation model is that outliers do not occur frequently, but uh, in reality, this is uh, not the case for financial markets. Uh, so only this week we see here uh, two events outside the third standard deviation, which is pretty extreme and clearly not representative. So to avoid premature exits and hang on to the profitable trades, I've started looking at the mean absolute deviation, which is available from our premium VVAP suite. Uh, technically speaking, uh, what we're seeing here is actually the residual mean absolute deviation, which is a slightly different calculation. We can come back to that during the Q&A if anyone is interested. But uh, for now, I think we can agree that uh, the MAD or the mean absolute deviation uh, has a wider and more stable value area and that the outer bands are further removed uh, when compared to the standard deviation as we see above here. So the idea is to see if we can uh, improve uh, probability for momentum trades uh, using this mean absolute deviation to establish the value and overbought, oversold areas. Basically, the uh, mean absolute deviation um, calculation it provides some more information uh, about extreme events. So you can think uh, about the 1929 crash or Black Monday in 1987 or the dot-com bubble or uh, the pandemic, what have you. Um, but it does not seek to reduce the effect of uh, outlier events, uh, but instead includes them as a part of the analysis. So that makes the residual mean absolute deviation more stable, providing more information about the tails of the probability distribution. So we'll uh, take a look uh, at the statistical impact of that in a follow-up presentation. I think it's uh, too much to go over that here today. Um, the idea is uh, to compare the rolling standard deviation versus the mean absolute uh, deviation, uh, VVAP value area and outer bands to see which one has the most favorable probability when applied to Ichimoku setups in uh, higher time frame narrow ranges. So not 100% sure when I will have that ready, um, probably sometime early next week. Um, also not entirely up uh, to us as I'm waiting for an update to the um, latest uh, Bloodhound Shark Indicators update. All right, for now, uh, let's uh, sum up uh, what we've uh, discussed. Uh, first, we went over the uh, Ichimoku plots, including the forward uh, projecting cloud here, uh, showing how to align the composite trend with the key and consecutive signals uh, with these uh, thrust bars. And then we looked at um, higher time frame consolidation. So sideways action that can identify scenarios where the market is waiting for a catalyst 
to bring about the next uh, major move higher or lower. So good environment for momentum trading. And then finally, we uh, want to align the Ichimoku signals uh, within a VWAP value area, similar to the squeeze channel spotting setups that uh, may see institutional participation. Um, but like I said, instead of the traditional standard deviation, uh, we're looking uh, at the mean absolute deviation uh, as an alternative to that. So if it's uh, all right with everyone, it's uh, pretty pretty late here in uh, in Germany. So uh, approaching 11 o'clock. So uh, I'll transition into the promotion that we've uh, prepared for this event. Uh, that way we can also have uh, some room for questions towards the end here. Uh, so we've uh, included the premium Ichimoku and uh, session VWAP suite. You also get the indicator library with this event special. And as I mentioned, uh, we'll do a follow-up presentation with some test results and a blood on template from uh, shark indicators. So keep an eye out for that in your inbox um, early next week sometime. Um, but yeah, for now, the list price uh, for these uh, items is uh, 765. And at uh, 595, you get a pretty good discount here today. The library membership uh, pretty much free of charge with the uh, traditional Bollinger squeeze uh, indicator and the narrow range analysis that we went over here as well. And uh, we also have a uh, special event uh, discount uh, in the membership section. So uh, members already get a 10 to 20% discount on uh, indicators in the premium section. So we've uh, created a special bundle for this event, extending a additional discount to our members for this event. Okay, so this is where you uh, go to register for the promotion, listedindicators.com forward slash event. If you've been sitting on the event, uh, uh, if you've been sitting on the fence uh, regarding the library, this is a good opportunity to uh, dive into it and get some of the most viable tools from the premium suites along with that. Um, and as I mentioned, for existing members, just log into your account, navigate to the premium section where you find uh, the event discount in the premium suite along with the other indicators there. So I think we'll have this uh, up for the balance uh, of the week. So head on over to listedindicators.com event to check it, check it out. And uh, yeah, as I said, there will be a follow-up as well. Um, yeah, probably early, early next week sometime for that. So with that, I'd uh, like to hand it back over to Thomas and open up uh, the Q&A. Sometimes it's not, uh, possible to get to all the questions uh, or I miss a couple. So you can also get in touch with me via the contact form over at listedindicators.com. And you can also always send me a message at info at listedindicators.com. All right, so let's uh, have a look here. You can find some questions. So the book uh, that I mentioned, uh, that was um, uh, from uh, Toby Crable. Um, it's, uh, uh, I forgot what the title was, um, but it's uh, on uh, narrow ranges and the uh, opening range. So Toby Crable uh, looked that up. Um, and yeah, it's, um, it's not Hoffman, I think, uh, 
you're confusing that with something else, but uh, yeah, the, the name here, I think uh, Ari entered it here in the chat window as well, uh, Toby Crable. So, uh, and uh, Chris, uh, I think you had a question about uh, the standard deviation bands. Uh, yeah, a feature uh, of uh, our suite here is the ability to enter the uh, half standard deviation band. So this is the 0 0.5, and this is the 1.5, and the 2.5 out here. So mid bands are practical for the uh, higher time frames, particularly because uh, sometimes they're quite wide apart. So it's uh, it's good to have these mid bands to orient yourself as well. All right, so uh, Kyle, uh, the uh, system that I would uh, like to show you is uh, is a template that I will um, show it in the uh, in the follow up presentation. So if you register to the spotlight or if you're a library member, you will get that as well. It can be uh, automated, uh, Eric. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I use uh, Bloodhound from Shark Indicators to create and uh, test uh, different trading approaches. And um, yeah, that's a uh, visual programming tool for those of us who are not um, programmers. So a quick and easy way to create uh, entry logic and then you can be more sophisticated about it. Um, order management, uh, trade management, and uh, the add-on, which is called Blackbird. That's a little bit more uh, complicated, but uh, Bloodhound is a good good place to to start. So I'll do a tutorial follow-up on uh, on this uh, for that. So Sally, uh, if you have uh, the uh, VVAP already, uh, then uh, if you're a member, you can uh, log into the uh, um, membership section um, and get a uh, member discount there. Otherwise, I can also put together a mini bundle for you if you just want the Ichimoku and a membership if you don't have that already. So just... Uh, PM me and I'll, I'll get you set up. So Kyle, a screenshot where the VVAP and the Ichimoku are both integrated together. I think I uh, showed a couple of screenshots uh, with that. Um, Uh, Michael, uh, for intraday trading, what's the shortest time frame you would recommend? I think um, that depends uh, a lot about of uh, volatility as well. Uh, you know, it's also a question of, of risk. Uh, so, in a very volatile market, uh, I would perhaps go down to something like three minutes. Nothing shorter, shorter than that. A default. Uh, time frame is uh, for for short time frame is five minutes. I also like f 15 minutes, but uh, as I said, that's uh, very dependent on on the risk level that you're you're able to take on. Uh, Clayton, uh, you're mentioning uh, Carter. Uh, Carter also had uh, a um, squeeze setup. That's mentioned. We do actually have a blog post on this. If you go to our webpage, uh, blog here, and then uh, I think that would be under volatility posts. Yeah, here you see the squeeze indicator uh, where we discussed that uh, Bollinger squeeze, Bollinger Keltner squeeze. That's typically the what's referred to as the the Carter squeeze. And then we have our own <laughs> squeeze uh, definition as well. So you can, yeah, just go to our blog and you'll, you'll find that there um, along with some of the other things that we've discussed in the indicator spotlights. Um, 
So um, want to have uh, another discussion on the uh, key and the consecutive signals it looks like here. Someone was interested in, in that. Uh, let me see, go back to that here. I can show you that clearly. Um, so yeah, this is the um, uh, the key signal is the double triangle that will uh, show up um, after a bearish signal or a um, bearish trend as you see here. So it's the first bullish signal after a uh, downtrend. And so that is the, the key signal. And any signal that comes after that, you see we come back into uh, consolidation here, and then we have a signal again, consolidation, continuation signal. So that is that is how that, that works. The composite trend definition and trend state is basically triggering um, the signals once you have a thrust bar uh, confirming the direction of the trend. So the uh, higher time frame range analysis is uh, just a um, uh, little bit more information on on what the institutional traders are doing. So um, I like to to have a look at um, a short term, a mid term, and a uh, longer term. And I think this uh, range analysis can uh, can help you uh, find areas where. Um, the momentum or the volatility is, is low. And once you see momentum picking up, uh, then uh, there's a greater chance after a uh, time of consolidation that you will be able to follow in the direction of uh, the new trend. Uh, so I also mentioned uh, in the uh, invites here where to consider uh, exits. So entries and exits, um, let's see here, go back to the slide here on the rolling DVAP. So generally the entry within value here, and then you will take the exit uh, once you uh, get to the second standard deviation band. Um, again, we see here uh, how much more easily we reach the overbought uh, areas with the standard deviation, which is why I suggest you take a look at the mean absolute deviation instead for the um, rolling VBAP. Also available, of course, uh, with the standard anchored um, calculations. Uh, Ari, uh, accordion, it's, uh, I really don't understand how, how you can I can play that. It's uh, it's quite quite impressive. You don't see the the keys like you do on a piano or anything like that. So it's very much, uh, uh, yeah, very interesting instrument, and I think also appropriate for uh, for this uh, this presentation. The expansion and the contraction is sort of sort of playing the music both on an accordion and in the market. So that's it's a it's a good image, I think. Um, Kyle, you want to know a little bit about blood on integration? Are all indicators on the premium sites uh, optimized for Bloodhound? Uh, yeah, all our indicators uh, are uh, blood on compatible. Uh, so right now uh, I'm just looking at the, been testing the new version uh, for Bloodhound. There was some issues with uh, multi threading, and so um, I've checked out a better version of that and it's uh, it's been resolved um, but I'm sure they're, they're working on some other things as well so I think that will be out uh, not not too long uh, does each indicator have a guide to learn how to use it I have intro videos for all indicators uh, a couple of them also have extensive uh, PDF materials for you to review or uh, programming guides um, but uh, Marco, you can sign up for a trial and get all those materials ahead of making any purchasing decision. So you'll know exactly what you're signing up for and um, decide whether or not it's, uh, 
is good enough. Otherwise, as I said, I'm always available uh, for questions and we have support, um, a good support. So uh, you can also come back with specific questions if there's something that you're um, uncertain about or something that you uh, want to learn more about. Uh, Renko bars, yeah, we have, uh, Gino, our own uh, listed uh, Renkos uh, developed specifically for automation purposes. So I think it would be a little bit too much for this presentation to go into that, but there is a um, free trial for those as well. So if you want to check it out, i get you some more materials on that. Um, about VVAP, do you have a moving VVAP um, X period volume weighted? So we don't have point and click. That's uh, not really our focus, point and click uh, indicators. Um, so what we have is uh, our tools uh, that are focused on um, automation ready. So you can uh, program with them um, and you can also use them for discretionary trading, but uh, point and click that's sort of like a discretionary only focus and um, we've decided to focus on things that you can do both for automation and discretionary trading so uh, that's not something that we offer um, more about the mean absolute deviation I think uh, we're running out on, on time for that uh, now but uh, you're welcome to uh, get in touch with me uh, Nolan I'd be happy to elaborate uh, perhaps even uh, Harry would be a better person to contact about that um, he's very very well versed in the mathematical equation so uh, feel free to reach out and I'll uh, direct you uh, on to him all right, so uh, with that, I think I will uh, wrap up here. Um, thanks a lot, uh, everyone, for tuning in. It's uh, been a pleasure as uh, always. And no, I didn't get to all the questions here, uh, but uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me again via the contact form or at Listed Indicators or info at listedindicators.com. So with that, wrapping up the presentation here for today, thanks again for checking in. Hope it's been of value, and I look forward to seeing you in the membership section soon. Chris Lassen signing off from Berlin, Germany. Bye-bye. All right. Well, thank you again, Chris, for taking the time to share with us today. If you enjoyed today's session, we hope you will join us in future webinars. We would like to remind you that the information provided was that of Lizard Indicators and not of NinjaTrader. All information was for educational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us here at the NinjaTrader ecosystem.